Hello and welcome back to another episode of Girls Do Sport, the bite-sized guide to women's sport here in Scotland. Girls Do Sport is a joint project between the Scottish Women in Sport and the sports journalism students here at the University of the West of Scotland. We want to showcase the fantastic work being carried out by a whole range of sports across the country, from playing to coaching and management. In each episode, we are focused on a different sport and today the spotlight is on athletics. Later on, we'll be speaking to studio guest Peter Jardin, the Head of Communications at Scottish Athletics, and Gemma Riki of Kilbarkin Athletics Club. You can join in the conversation using the hashtag GirlsDoSport. So here's an introduction to the world of women's athletics. Athletics has been a sport which has had a significant amount of coverage lately, with the Commonwealth Games being hosted in Glasgow in 2014, and furthermore, this year's World Championships being held in London. The sport in Scotland is undoubtedly heading in the right direction with a record number of Scottish athletes making up the Team GB during the 2017 World Championships with more than half being female and over 7,500 female members at grassroots level. Firstly, our reporter Ryan Crombie visited a training evening with athletes Philippa Mileage and Mary Henry to get a better understanding of the positive vibe emanating from Scottish athletics. So I got into sport when I was at school. My dad kind of forced me into it because he said I'd be good at running. Um, I was a swimmer previously and I was like a bit reluctant to get into athletics because I was like that's kind of my sport. Uh, but a few of my friends at school were doing it so I just kind of went along and I started really enjoying it. I started getting better and uh, winning a few races and that kind of kept me going in the sport. Um, so I'd ran when I was younger, when I was a young teenager and I'd kind of given it up like a lot of teenagers do and when I was in my late 20s I was just looking for something to kind of keep me fit, went down to the local athletics club, really really enjoyed it, found I was quite good at it and it's quite addictive, it's such a great thing to be part of that it's hard not to love it so um, yeah that's how I got into it. I think it doesn't always like if someone isn't interested in athletics that's kind of fair dues but a sport that you're kind of interested in and it's quite a lot of help if you have a few friends that are into that sport like none of my friends from school still run but I've made so many new friends from so many different places through running that it's always fun. Um, it's such a good community be, to be part of you meet so many amazing girls that you might not have met just in your normal life you've got a common interest it's a really good way to um, create goals, focus, be driven, achieve things, whether that be um, individually in a race or as part of a team. Um, it's great to be just part of that community that you might not have had access to. And I've met some amazing friends, new friends over the years, and it just gives girls that kind of empowerment and drive to, to achieve things. I think because of like the health benefits of athletics and of training um, in your later years that it would be always a good thing to do. It's not going to be detrimental. You might get a few injuries, a few pains, aches and sores, but in the long term it's going to be a lot beneficial. I mean, it goes without saying that there's so much in the press nowadays about how important it is to keep healthy and fit and this is such a fun way to do it then why wouldn't you do it it's so important um, for not just for the immediate time but for your future as well to, to keep fit and healthy uh, probably come with game standard that's always kind of been a goal set of mine um, the one next year is quite soon so probably won't be kind of going towards that but in the few years to come I'd hope to kind of be up there pushing for a come with game slot uh, I mean, it goes without saying that I'm absolutely delighted to, to be recognised and for such an amazing award by Scottish Athletics. I work really hard um, to achieve goals, so it's really good to be recognised. When I first started off in athletics, one of my teammates has actually said to me, <clears throat> would I ever, ever envisage that I would run for Scotland? And it was never a goal that I thought was achievable, but I just kept setting new goals and luckily that's something that, that did come to fruition for me and I feel like being recognised for that such a great award, it, it means a lot to me, yeah. We are now joined by Head of Communications at Scottish Athletics, Peter Jardin, and under 20 gold medal winning Gemma Riki. 
First, we're going to speak to Peter. So, what are your thoughts on the participation levels in girls and women in athletics? Well, actually, I think we're one of the sports where there's a really good gender split already. And in fact, some recent statistics for our club membership in Scotland was around 18,000. And 51% of those were male and 49% female. So we're pretty happy at the moment with the participation levels or the membership levels of females in the sport. So what projects are there or could there be to boost or grow the participation? There, there aren't specific projects for females, but we do have a lot going on in terms of trying to grow the sport. One of those that we brought in a few years ago was called Club Together, which was uh, funding part-time officers at clubs. I think Cobarkin uh, Gemma's Club was one of those. And that has seen memberships rise and competition entries rise from clubs, so getting involved actively rather than just going on once a week in training. We've got a couple of other programmes like a national academy for our very best young athletes to try and keep them in through the important years in the late teens and there's, there, there are other things going on as well. So what kind of challenges can girls and young women face in athletics? I think one of the challenges is a dropout rate in the mid-teens or late teens. That's applicable both to males and females. There are a number of reasons why it happens. It, you know, it often happens at 15, 16, and it happens again maybe at 18, 19 when, when the athletes leave home or don't go to college or start into, into work and their, their life changes. So we're working on that. We're seeing probably a slight increase in our numbers at under 20 level. So we're hopefully retraining ones from under 17, under 15, 17, 20. We're seeing that in our competition entries, increases which are going up. So that's a good sign. But it's something that we're, we're asking clubs to look at and it's, it's an issue for all sports, I think. Is it important to kind of tackle it at that club level before it can be at national level? Yeah, I think the cl cl club level is, is essential and that's where you, that's where everything stems from that and it, Scottish athletics as a, as, a, as a sport has benefited from that in recent years. We're seeing people at the very top like Callum Hawkins from Kilbarkin, Laura Muir from Dundee Hockhill at Glasgow University. They've come right through that system and they've emerged right at the very top. So then that's inspiring others from clubs to start to, cut, uh, to come in underneath them. Andrew Butchett from Central, another very, very good athlete who's now on the global stage. So everything flows, it's almost flows up the way. So those were the kind of challenges you can face. About the flip side, what are the benefits of getting involved in athletics? Gonna... Well, the benefits I think would be enjoyment, making friends, uh, keeping fit, uh, having goals and purpose. Um, even just getting out to training a couple of nights a week, it's, you know, it's, it's got to be better than sitting in the house. I would say that. But no, I think Gemma can probably speak better than me about that. But uh, there are clear benefits for, for young girls. As head of communications, what do you see as like, the media landscape is for Scottish women um, in athletics? Well, that's a really good question, uh, Mary Ann, because in a lot of sports, there's obviously an issue there about how women are projected. I'm reasonably comfortable in Scotland about the way our athletes are projected. Some of those that I've mentioned, like Laura Muir, uh, Ailish McCogan, and Sammy Kinghorn, very high profile or uh, in terms of athletics or a similar profile to our best male athletes. So there's not really uh, too much of an issue there. More of a challenge is probably putting athletics itself uh, into, a, into a, a bigger sphere in terms of the media. But I'm comfortable with the way some of that is going. The other, uh, aspect that is booming is social media, our own social media channels and I actually think that that's a really good tool for keeping people in sport as well because when young girls were competing 10 years ago they were running from Gifnook and they didn't know the athlete from Edinburgh or from Aberdeen, now they're all connected on social media, they're all pals and they meet up each other up at events, I think Gemma's nodding here. So I, I know that this is happening because I see it on our networks. Okay, thank you very much for that. And next, we visited the National Cross Country Relays in Cumbernauld, one of the biggest participation national championship events in Scottish sports, with over 2,400 athletes entered across young females, young males, women's and men's race. The National Cross Country Relay Race is an annual event on the athletics calendar in Scotland. 
with hundreds of girls given the opportunity to take part in the young females race. The event, which is held at Cumbernauld, gives the girls a great opportunity to test their long distance abilities against each other. The young females race is split into three legs with three different age groups running. The first leg that heads off are the youngest of the three age groups. With weather conditions being windy and the ground heavy underfoot, the run is a real test of the stamina and strength of the girls. Once the first runner comes home, the runner from the second age group sets off. Here, runners from Edinburgh, AC and Vicky Park Glasgow Athletics Club begin their journey around the course. Every runner has to complete three laps of the course with the total distance totalling to around 7,500 metres. This is a tough test for even seasoned cross-country runners. The third and final leg involves girls from the oldest age category. With these girls having slightly more experience in cross country, they will know exactly what has to be done to get over the finish line. The undulating course, coupled with the boggy ground underfoot, makes it extra difficult for the girls to maintain a steady speed and achieve personal targets they set before the race began. With the finish line just around the corner for the girls, the curtain is almost drawn on another successful Scottish athletics event. Now a conversation with Gemma Riki. So Gemma, how are you enjoying your athletics at the moment? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've always enjoyed it. I think that makes it a lot easier. I'm in a good atmosphere group. Um, races are getting more high profile. Um, even just the smaller ones at um, Scottish Athletics have created BMC events. So we're running more of them and they're good atmospheres at them. Everyone's enjoying it. It comes across everybody's enjoying it. So it makes it a whole better atmosphere to be around. So how did you get involved in athletics? Um, I started at the age of nine at cross country, just at the school. 
Um, and then at 10 years old I went to Kabarkin Athletics and I've just kept in it since then. How did it feel to come away with her gold in Italy? Yeah, it was really surreal. Like, even when people still say it to me, it doesn't feel real. I think that's just the whole part of, like, working hard towards it and then once that happens, it's a bit of a shock. But yeah, I'm still getting used to it, but it's still amazing. It's, it's an amazing experience and I've enjoyed it. So we spoke about the challenges and benefits that come with athletics. What are some of those that you've faced? Um, the challenges, are probably at that stage at school when everyone's moving on, everyone's going out partying, um, sticking in at it. But I think just because I was really set on it, um, I just struggled in school a lot uh, academically so one of the benefits of it was giving my focus um, achievement, sense of achievement when you're not getting that in school and you're maybe coming out of school and you're doing some more sports stuff and getting achievements and the confidence it's helped me a lot through that. Do you think there's a good sense of community among the athletes? Yeah definitely, um, probably all my friends from athletics I've stayed friends with um, since nine years old, even the ones that don't run as much now, I'm still really good friends with them and um, the community of the athletics is really good. So how beneficial has the National Academy been in your development? Yeah, the National Academy is really good, I've been part of it for two years now. It gets you, I think it's very good for younger uh, athletes. Um, it gets them staying away from home for the week. It gets them mixing with other people. Um, I've, and a world class environment just now in training with Laura and Andy. So um, yeah, I've seen I've seen younger ones really progress from it, and so did I. So what would you say to a young girl who wants to get involved in athletics? I'd say go for it. Um, there's no such thing as a slow out runner. If that's your slow, then if that's your slow to somebody else, that's your fast. You can always improve on times, jumps, uh, throws. You can always like better yourself, and then before you know it, you're. Well, I wasn't that great when I was younger, um, and I've had to work for it before I know I'm European champion. So, um, I'd say go for it. There's every opportunity, and it's a great sport to be in. What are your views as an athlete of the media landscape of Scottish women's athletics? Yeah, I've I've seen it grow as I've got older. I've been on it for like ten years now. Um, and when you're younger, I don't think it's that big on having, like, you don't look into it that much. But as you're, like, putting on the TV and seeing athletics on the TV and uh, seeing it on the websites, and I know, like, even when I'm just put on the Scottish Athletics website, it gives me a boost, like, oh, people are noticing me. And um, and magazines, BMC magazine, PB magazine, when you see yourself, you're like, oh, I'm actually doing all right, yeah. So what is next for you? Um, next for me... I'm moving up as a senior, which I'm very excited about. I've got a few cross countries this year that I'm just going to see how that goes starting Saturday. Um, and then the big aim is Tokyo 2020, so that's the main aim. So. Okay, thank you very much for that. So it's now time for some questions from our guests from our studio audience. Our first question is from Nicole. Hi, so who do you think are the best role models for young female athletes in Scotland? Um, personally, I think the best athlete. The athletes are the best in the world, but also there's Scottish athletics. Have, now their athletes are becoming the best in the world. So uh, knowing them is even greater, being around them. And uh, even like young people, like I still look up to just people that are just maybe a couple of years older than me that aren't right up there, but like we're all looking up towards them. Thank you. So our next question is from Sarah, who's from Germany. Hi. How much of a legacy do you think there have been for women from events like Glasgow 2014? Legacy is always a, it's a huge issue to define and there's, you can talk about a participation legacy and a competition legacy. There's been a participation legacy, I think, in Scottish athletics. We've seen massive rises in entries for competitive national championship events since 2013 and actually since 2011 before London 2012. So between London 2012 and London 2014, Glasgow 2014, we've seen youngsters who were at those events or watching those events on the TV starting to compete at as 14, 15 year olds and now they're coming through as 17 and 18 year olds. In terms of a competition legacy, Scotland had a team at Glasgow 2014. At the, at the Olympics following that, we had 15 athletes in the GB team, which was the best for 180 years. And then we had 16 athletes at the World Championships competing for GB, which was the best ever by a double the number. So those athletes, some of who had come through the ranks at Glasgow 2014, had stepped right up into GB tracksuits and performed at a global stage. We have one final question from Anne, who's right behind me. How can we stop girls giving up on the teams? 
well, that's a really difficult one. How, how do we stop them? Um, we've got to keep them involved. We've got to keep them uh, engaged. We've got to keep them enjoying it. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that social media, I think, is, can play a part. Um, Jim has talked about media coverage, video footage of, of, of races is something which kids can watch and say, enjoy being feeling part of the community. Um, but I think just keep stressing the, the enjoyment factor. Yeah, definitely. I think enjoyment's a lot of it. Not getting pushed into it and doing it for yourself. And even if you're not getting pushed into it and you're not doing as well as what you want, you're still enjoying it. So I think that's a big part of it. Thank you very much. And thank you to your shitty audience. Remember, you can join in the conversation by using hashtag Girls Do Sport. It's now time for a bit of fun. And over our nine episodes, we're going to see who can fit the most words about their sport into just 15 seconds. So Gemma's going to have a go today. So if you can look down that camera and fit in as many words as possible to describe why athletics is the best sport to be a part of. Okay. Go. Friends, fun, variety, long jump, high jump, middle distance, cross country, uh, shot part, um, family, friends, community, um, enjoyment. That's your time up. <laughs> that was a great effort, Gemma, and we'll add your score to our leaderboard. And you can see all the scores from each episode so far on our Scottish Women in Sport social media channels. And you got 15 words in there. <laughs> and now we go over to our Young Ambassadors. Um, the best advice I've been given, and I've also learned this for doing the sport for such a long time, is that you don't always win and you're not always going to be the best, but if you stick in there and you work hard, then good things will come. That's all we have time for today, but just before we go, we'll let you know what's happening across the sport world in Scotland over the next few weeks or so. At the start of December, Elite Track Cycling comes to Glasgow with the Revolution Series at the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome. Into January and get wrapped up warm because spectating is free at the Great Edinburgh Cross Country Athletics. For more information about these events and others, head over to sportonspec.co.uk. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Girls Do Sport, brought to you by Scottish Women in Sport and the Sports Journalists of the University of the West of Scotland. We'd also like to thank our brilliant partners at Brand Oath for making everything look fabulous and Sport on Spec and Ever Active. Keep the conversation going using the hashtag Girls Do Sport. But for now, thank you for watching. Imagine a world where females of all ages and walks of life get the chance to be a part of a sporting community where being a girl doesn't make you stand out. Scottish Women in Sport had this vision, and that's how Girls to Sport came to life. It doesn't matter if you just started school, if your high school exams are stressing you out, or if you're trying to juggle career and family life at the same time. Everyone needs some getaway, where they can have fun and feel good. Your body needs to be active, and there definitely is a sport for every taste. It doesn't matter if your reaction time is really slow, it doesn't matter if you don't know how to hold a racket or what a backhand is, we all have to start somewhere. Ever thought of trying judo? It's fun and it shouldn't hurt your flexibility either. If you're more into team sports, basketball might be your thing. Check your local opportunities. Maybe you prefer being outdoors but you don't really like running? Well, skiing might just be the thing for you. Even if you're a successful woman, being busy is no good excuse. Hello, my name is Judith Ralston. I'm a mother of three and wife of one, the last time I looked. But uh, my actual job is weather presenter for BBC Scotland, a job I absolutely adore. And along with that, I enjoy tennis.